Fox News alert. Attorney General William Barr telling Congress it will be sent, to, he will send them the 400 page Mueller report by mid April, if not sooner. Barr saying that portions of the special counsel's findings, they're going to have to be redacted, including material subject to criminal procedures and intelligence community sources and methods. The Attorney General adding that the White House will not be reviewing the report before it's sent to Capitol Hill. And this is part is getting a lot of attention. Barr saying some are uh, mischaracterizing his four page summary. He says the summary was only about principal conclusions and nothing more. Barr also said he is willing to testify before Congress after the report is made public and he gave them a couple of dates for that. President Trump reacting to the news just moments ago. Well, I have great uh, confidence in the attorney general and uh, if that's what he'd like to do, uh, I have nothing to hide. This was a hoax. This was a witch hunt. Uh, I have absolutely nothing to hide. And I think a lot of things are coming out with respect to the other side. But uh, I have a lot of confidence in the attorney general. All right, Jesse, the, this is getting a lot of attention because when this week we've been reporting that the Justice Department says it will be weeks, not months, that people will get to see this full report. But now we know it's really just a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. It's not like eight weeks. And then the attorney general said, and I'm willing to come up and explain it all to you. I will testify in front of Congress. And still, Chairman Nadler, he's <laughs> mad. Right. Uh, Barr's a total pro. He's got his eyes on the road, got the hands on the wheel. And, and the Democrats, two. yeah, <laughs> Democrats, go. the kids in the back, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there? He's not even listening. He's just going to get to the Don't destination. Don't make me pull this car Don't over. Don't make me pull this car <laughs> over, kids. He's doing everything by the book. I think he has impeccable credentials. And the Democrats are really setting themselves up for even more disappointment when they do see as much as they can and there still is no collusion. I, I'm kind of confused as to what they're actually alleging is going on. Like, Barr is in a criminal conspiracy to cover up Russia collusion with Rod Rosenstein and the rest of the Department of Justice. I just don't think that's true. Um, can we make a trip down whataboutism lane? Sure. Okay. In, in the intersection Jesse, of, take the wheel. of conspiracy and cover up, okay? Yeah. Jesse, take the wheel. How about when Hillary bleached 30,000 emails oh, or destroyed all of the Blackberries with a hammer or when her husband met with the woman investigating her on a tarmac and everybody pled the fifth? and everybody got immunity deals permission to go a little farther yes. down the yeah. lane. Okay, how about when the IRS destroyed tons of servers or when the AG at the time Holder was held in contempt for not disclosing all the information about Fast and Furious or all the contractors in Benghazi were made to sign NDAs. That sounded like a little bit more of a cover-up then the evidence of the, there's a cover-up going on right now, I would just let the Democrats remind them what they said then, which was absolutely nothing. All right, Juan, I'm going to give you a chance to uh, reverse uh, in, from that lane if you'd like to. No, I'm, we're going to stop the metaphor right there. Um, do you think that this gets the Democrats a little bit closer to what they need, which is that they say they want to see it. They're obviously concerned that there will be redactions in regards to uh, material that is subject to the grand jury um, or anything that would hurt a third party that was um, peripheral and also anything that's intelligence related. But this gets them a little bit closer to where they've wanted to be. Well, Jerry Nadler, uh, the chairman, had a conversation with Bill Barr earlier this week, and he said he wasn't satisfied in that conversation. Uh, because Barr indicated to him that there would be redactions in whatever is released. And he said at that time he thought it would be, again, mid-April, which is what he confirmed in this letter today. But what's the news out of the letter for people who are looking at it as Trump critics is that he said that people are overvaluing the earlier missive, which was simply said, here's the bottom line in terms of conspiracy and obstruction. He says it was not intended to be an exhaustive report on what Mueller had found. Right. He's, he says it he, in this letter, he says, um, as my letter made clear, my notification of Congress and the public provided pending release of the report, a summary of its principal conclusion. And that is its bottom line, of course, which we know is no collusion. And then on the obstruction piece. Right. Sending that to but Bob. the thing about that is that it has provided uh, Jesse the opportunity to jump up and down and take the wheel for the last week. So I think there are a lot of people who think, you know what, Bob Barr, uh, William Barr, I should say, has done a, a tremendous service to the president and his supporters because they've allowed them now to, to treat this as if it's a fait accompli, it's all done, we know what the bottom line is, when in fact there may be tremendous amount of evidence, there may be tremendous amount of testimony, although we're, again we're not sure we'll see grand jury testimony, uh, indicating that there was involvement, it just didn't rise to the level of indictment and prosecution. Uh, but that's, you know, a nuance at this point. But nonetheless, I think today is good news. I would say this to people on the left. 
I don't think that you should get excited and expect that, uh, you know, you got to dial back your expectations. I don't think it's going to be damning even in the full report. And people on the right, I would say, dial back the idea that you think, as President Trump says, this is total vindication, because I don't think that's what's coming. Kennedy, are you dialing up or dialing down? Dialing back? Forward? Reverse? I, uh, I, I'm in neutral <laughs> on, on most of these things because I have very low expectations of government officials, by and large. And uh, I'm, I'm never surprised by the process or the ability of either side to politicize even the tiniest piece of news. But what I will say about William Barr, um, I don't share your universal blanket of love. Uh, for the Attorney General. You know, he's a, he's a fine pick. He, he wasn't my first choice. He's got some issues in his past. This must be a very different time from when he served under George H.W. Bush. <laughs> I mean, he, he must be just overwhelmed. I would say he's better than Jeff Sessions. But, but I don't see why he would completely undermine his own reputation by putting out a, a false summary yeah, of the Mueller report. That, that does not serve him at all yep. in the slightest. And he's also not someone, he's not, he's not going to seek the presidency. It doesn't seem as though he's got these grand political uh, aspirations. And also, special counsel is helping with the redactions. And if this were so completely counter to what Robert Mueller and his team had been you doing would, for the last two years, they would have come out because so they're done. They would have come out and said, no, 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 yeah, that is a mischaracterization, right. and they are working on the redactions. So, Greg, together. we gave you some time to get revved up. Ready for the, Why would I need time, Dana? I don't know. Are you suggesting that there's something going on with me? I know, I know that you wanted to digest this information. Uh, and... you using the word digest is unfair. <laughs> I might have no, a little I... issue right now that is not the public's business, and I would refrain from bringing it up again. Look, uh, this, all this news is basically table scraps for a bitter media uh, where you, you will see redactions. They will scream conspiracy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they'll, uh, Rachel Maddow will break out the whiteboard because this is their business model. I predict not only will they find collusion and obstruction, they will get find the location of Bigfoot mm -hmm. and the lost city of Atlantis, mm -hmm. which I believe is somewhere outside Denver. So this is going to keep going because the media wants to keep this going because it's their business model. And who benefits from this? Russia, because let's not forget, the primary goal of Russia was to undermine our institutions. Yeah. It wasn't about electing Trump. It wasn't about electing anybody. It was about screwing with our mentality, making us question everything. And to that hate each other. Yeah, and foment chaos. Right. And who's fulfilling the Russians' goal? Media and the Democrats, except the ones, one is correct. The ones that dial back their expectations and move on are doing the right thing. You know what I would say at this moment? Bill Barr is so much the focus of all our attention. Mm. Uh, and Bill Barr, you got to remember, from, at least from my perspective, campaigned for this job and said that he believed in extensive presidential power. I don't know if campaign uh, is I, He right. wrote a letter, Dana. I know, a it's letter. an unsolicited well, letter. But like a memo. Are you suggesting that there's a politician involved in this? <laughs> no, I Bill, Every wait, attorney wait, general wait, 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 wait. is I someone was, that has agreed I, I'm gonna with go, the I'm gonna, president. I'm going to go further. Have you ever seen Mr. Barr and Steve Bannon together at the same time? <laughs> I think uh, Could it just him. be Bannon with glasses? No, no, no. I think he ate him. Can I ask you permission to make a comparison? What, Jesse? Permission? Allowed. Um... I think Bill Barr, as a former attorney general, who did not anticipate going back, he, I don't think he was applying for the job. He didn't want to necessarily leave like his life as he had it to go back into government. Yeah, to the Trump um, campaign. Yeah. <laughs> so, not a lot of people so wanted to he, do that. He, he, but he's a lawyer. He's a lawyer's lawyer. He's like, I've got some thoughts on this. Jot some down and send some over. It would be like, let's say that if I didn't have the uh, job that I have now, but I was in a PR practice, and I was like, you know, I've got some advice and thoughts for Sarah uh, Sanders. I'm just going to shoot her a little letter. And, the, and the, does that sound like I'm campaigning to be in a job? No, but you've written two books, and one of them was largely about your time as press secretary for the president. Yes, and they're still available on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> One's about a, a dog, by the way, named Jasper, in case you guys have forgotten. He wrote a letter and sent it Jasper to the White did? House counsel that's involved directly in this matter, Dana. I think that takes it to a different level. All right, well, maybe he will have to answer such a question. It goes all the way to the top, Dana. All the way to the top. All the way to the top. Space yeah. aliens. Bigfoot. All right, all right, she's going to yell at me. All right. All right, well, the president also slamming the 2020 Democratic presidential candidates, calling their policies radical. The Democrat Party has never been further outside of the mainstream. They are being brought so far left. Radical Democrats are the party of high taxes, open borders, late term abortion, crime, hoaxes, and delusions.
The Republican Party is the party for all Americans. Peter Ducey is live in Washington with more for us this morning. So, Peter, what a rally. Uh, the president also talking climate change as well last night. Tell us about that. And, Julie, he talked about the Green New Deal as something good for him because he wants Democrats to campaign on it. The president also joked about problems with wind power. If it doesn't blow, you can forget about television for that night. Darling, I want to watch television. I'm sorry the wind isn't blowing. I know a lot about wind. But climate change is an issue Democrats who are running for president are using specifically to appeal to young voters with warnings like this. In the great existential challenges that face us, and none greater than climate change, which the scientists tell us is happening beyond the shadow of a doubt, is caused by human activity and human inaction. The president also tailored his Green New Deal pitch for the Michigan crowd to mention its impact on taking cars as we know them off the road. Julie? Okay, so how different was President Trump's pitch about health care last night? Uh, very different than the Democrats hoping to challenge him because he's returned now to a 2016 campaign promise to replace Obamacare. We have a chance of killing Obamacare. We almost did it, but somebody unfortunately surprised us with thumbs down. But we'll do it a different way. Trump sees opposition to Obamacare as a strength. Democrats hoping to challenge him see it as a weakness. It's been clear from the beginning that they never intended to repeal and replace, right? All they wanted to do is just burn down the health care system. But the Trump team is signaling they've got a new health care proposal up their sleeves. We just don't know what it is yet. Julie? All right, Peter Ducey, thank you so much.